Well, over the last decade, millennial and Gen Z activists have played a growing role in politics, especially on the right. Journalist and frequent New York Times contributor Kyle Spencer investigates the shape of right-wing youth movement and its impact across the country. It's all in her new book. It's called Raising Them Right, the untold story of America's ultra-conservative youth movement and its plot for power. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Well, so in this book, you write about your findings while you were embedded, correct, for four years tracking this conservative group called Turning Point USA, which is led by Charlie Kirk. So explain to us how young activists like Charlie Kirk became such central figures and what did he change in your opinion about the conservative movement? So I think today we see um, the conservative movement, the Republican Party, really being a celebrity-making machine. And Charlie Kirk was a big part of that. He presents himself first as a kind of political celebrity, somebody that young kids can really, really latch onto and who can guide them and also inspire them if they indeed, you know, believe his his uh, his rhetoric. So you know, he wanted young people really to see his brand of conservative and think that it was cool. But you say he also needed the gray hairs to be turned on by his dreams. So is that about funding there? And then in turn, Kirk went to social media, really, to spread his message throughout college campuses. How successful was that? So he, um, uh, Charlie is incredibly influential among uh, older Republicans. They love him. Charlie arrived on the scene in 2012 and basically told older Republicans the Republican Party should not be a, st a stodgy old white guy party. And mm -hmm. I'm the kid who's going to bring your ideas to my uh, colleague, my young colleagues, my uh, young kids on college campuses. So that was... Um, um, you know, really the thing that he brought to the table. And the other thing Charlie said was, and I have this, is just, there's such a funny anecdote about this, but Charlie um, said, we need to get on social media. We need to do what the Obama folks did, what the Obama kids did, but we need to do it for our side. When he was building Turning Point USA, he would show folks these PowerPoints of what he was doing on different social media outlets. And a lot of them had no idea what he was talking about, but they were impressed because they understood that Charlie was a young activist who could go into a field that they didn't really get, social media, and he could talk to the young people that they wanted to become their future constituents. Well, and in some of this, so he's you know spreading his message on college campuses, he's doing it well, he's using social media. You've sort of touched on the fact that in your opinion, most progressives spend too much time worrying about conservative groups like the Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, but you point out that those groups are sort of targeting loners, people that are on the fringe. Instead, you argue they should focus on these college campuses, people who will graduate and bring their ideas into the workforce. You actually even called it alarming. So why is that mm -hmm. someone bringing a conservative mm -hmm. opinion into the workforce? Why is that alarming to you? So um, what we really see with the Republican Party right now is it's radicalizing and radicalizing young people in general. And with a lot of these other groups is they have ideas, they have ide pro-life, pro-guns. Uh, some of these groups are, are adamantly deny that, that climate warming is happening. Um, a lot of them want skeletal governments with no social safety net whatsoever. But they br present these ideas as mainstream. And so I kind of consider it a radicalism with a smile. They have swag and they want to invite you to a pizza party and they want to invite you to the conference in some really sw swanky venue where you can come and hang out with your friends and, and, and learn about these ideas. And the next thing you know, you are starting, you know, as a young person, you are starting to be fed some very radical ideas about the fact that the United States really isn't a democracy, that the founding fathers didn't want a democracy. There are also conservative values that are very traditional that you see on college campuses that, that are not radical. And that should not be alarming to people that those kinds of young people would then go into the workforce yeah. with conservative <laughs> ideals. Yeah, and it's such a great point because I think that, you know, and this was really what we see a lot with the radicalizing of the Republican Party, is there are some conservative ideas are about preserving history, about um, about family, about um, it's small government, it's a belief that the people should be more independent. I mean, you can agree that low taxes 
said, you can agree or disagree with this, but these are actually solid ideas. And I would say that these youth groups on college campuses today, unfortunately, are not trafficking in these philosophies as much as they're really trafficking in culture wars and kind of dishonest um, depictions of other students. I think that one of the biggest problems is the Democrats really take young people for granted and they don't mm. really understand what is happening on these college campuses. They don't understand how persuasive these right wing groups have become. And so they are not coming up with a good narrative and a good message for the ideas that Democrats really believe in. It's, you know, sometimes you see it on college campus where people with really traditional values, maybe they're very religious, they arrive on campus and there's you know, sometimes a progressive ideology kind of thrown in their face. I think a lot of people might be met with that. They may feel that way. Um, you know, then where do they turn? And why does a conservative view has, have to be considered you know, radicalized. Yeah, it can be very hard for a lot of us to argue that he's wrong. And these kids are seeing that themselves and they are then turning to Charlie and Turning Point and these other groups and saying, hey, wait, I'm with you guys because I believe in free speech. I want to be able to have an opinion that might differ from other people's opinions. So, um, you know, progressive kids on college campuses really need to start watching themselves and make sure that they are not turning their peers and their efforts to pull, push their own ideas aren't turning a lot of kids off. Off. Right, right. Well, Kyle, I mean, thank you so much for joining us. Very insightful. Thanks uh, so we much appreciate for you. Me. Yeah, and you can find Raising Them Right, the untold story of America's ultra conservative youth movement and its plot for power wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.